Count money, man. Money, Stack man. riches. Try, try, and told, try and told him I'm a beast, bud. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Grindcast. And we got the young future goat in the house. We got Tristan Delabic in the house, uh, who has been an absolute superstar uh, for us and our organization. How how long have you been in the game now, bro? This October will be five years. What? Yeah, this October will be five years. Insane. Yeah. Insane. Literally grew up yeah. in, in the in the business and, and just getting started. It's crazy to see how much this young fella has uh has accomplished already. What are you, 23? 23. 23. Yep. 23 years old and uh playing like 23 in 23 city. Playing like Michael Jordan in the city of Chicago, which is where we uh which is where we opened up an office together, sent uh sent Tristan to Chicago. You know what's funny is is I remember that uh one of that old uh, one of the parts of the scripture that you used to bring to me that you love was was uh send me yeah yes isaiah 6 8 isaiah 6 8 yeah and uh it was it, what was the, i don't know the whole scripture background but i remember you yep. before we sent you yes saying you know that you like that part of yep. it send me and so you know chicago opened up and, and we had to send somebody and uh you know the it, it was it's almost like you would see you know like my friend Maurice Claret you know he was a freshman yes. running back at Ohio State started his first game as a true freshman won a national title and probably people were like what are you doing you know why are you got a kid coming out of high school you know playing like that and that's that's how a lot of people kind of looked at 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 me that didn't know you yet because you went from SA you know which is a field trainer in our business top SA in the, in the whole company and our whole whole organization number one in the entire company number not number one number two in the entire company number one in our organization to general manager MGA you know leader and then just that fast all of a sudden you're a partner and in, in moving to Chicago so we knew I knew you know people here probably knew uh, but you were so young Jerry was you know probably still out even here, but in the company, the company really had no clue. You know, yeah. they were like, man, what are you doing? You, you want to take a, what were you, 22, 21? Yeah, 22. I just turned 22. Just turned, I 22, just turned 22, you know, at, at the time. And so I took Tristan on as a, as a partner. So he would end up being the third partner uh, in our, in our organization. And Tristan goes out to Chicago and we won the category. So in our company, there's 10 different categories like sports like divisions and in the categories we were in category three and in your first year uh as a partner you won the entire category and I, we're getting ready to go to las vegas and i can't wait to share the stage you know with you and, and your mom and you know an, another time i got to get you back i really want to review to all the new followers you know that listen to the to the to the grind about your upbringing, your mom, and you yeah. know how you were raised, or maybe you can give them a, a, a quick because we only got twenty minutes today. Yeah. Uh, but but maybe you know maybe you can can partner you know give give a brief one to two minute background on you for people that don't know who you are yeah. and how you started, and then I want to know you know as a partner what has been harder you know what has been harder than it seems or than it looked or or to you. Yeah, absolutely. So. A little bit about me. Uh, I grew up in Little Rock, Arkansas, and my parents split up when I was six. My we my mom grew up in Pittsburgh, Monroeville. Technically, she went to Gateway. So when they split up, we moved back up here. And then one day she came home and said she had to go away. So she did a little bit of she did a little bit of time, you know. And uh, she went away. What what was right around like a year and a half, two years of, of separation. And I was with my dad in that meantime. And then. He woke up one morning and said he had to go away, and uh, he went away, and so he went away for about six years, and so both my parents, you know, were, were gone, but I was always with one, and at one point I was with my grandparents for a little bit while they were both away, um, and then when she, he went away, I moved back to Pittsburgh permanently with my with my mom, and we lived with my grandparents because she went away. She couldn't get her... her uh, RN license, what she was in school for. So she worked two, three jobs. She was a hospice nurse at night, uh, like a desk 
nurse or something at, at during the day. You know what I mean? And uh, did everything she could to make ends meet. She didn't like handouts. I think the most we got were, were some some food stamps. And uh, we did the food bank lines. And those were some of my favorite times. You know what I mean? Some some old people giving us donuts and stuff like that and a brick cheese. It was it was good times. I ended up getting kicked out of every school. I was never in school for longer than two, two years and got expelled. And um, eventually I graduated so my mom pretty much did my my high school so I graduated in 2017 and two months later I found you found you know, this company found me I was got an email an automated email because I was putting my high school diploma on indeed you know just praying before I go to the air force were you at FedEx I was at UPS oh uh, UPS yeah, I was in the union so ah see that yep. come full circle now we're serving the union yes sir and so and so you come in and you blaze it I mean just came in first couple years blaze it youngest in the history ever to, to, to become partner and so what in the partnership, you know, from the outside, everything always looks yeah. easier. You know, what is what has been more difficult than maybe you thought it would be and be real? I, I think what's I think what's the most difficult isn't even necessarily anything internal in regard to pro, processing things like I was raised in, in a very aggressive, you know, household and, and you know, work first, play later. So that not. Nothing really ever thinks so I when I think about things I've gone through growing up, this is this is always I'm so excited. Perspective. Like pain, yeah, pain in this is like, thank God this ain't you know what I mean, what my dad used to have me doing. Yeah, yeah. This, this ain't what it could be, you know what Amen. I mean? Or th this wasn't them nights when the lights were off, the water was off, and we didn't have no food. So it's not that bad. Um but I think it's more of like an external thing of like you know, just just the the, the individuals that, that get into the industry or that aren't in the industry that kind of look at at you and you know maybe take it for granted and say like man it must it must be nice and like you know uh maybe miscalculate everything that goes into it and then delivering to them like because you, you don't want to come off egotistical and be like here's what I did here's what I was doing here's what it took you know so it's it's finding that I think that's a very hard thing of finding that balance of like look I love and appreciate you and, what did and it I, take though because the you know people see where you're at what you got where you know where you're at and they want that but how many of them are really you know it's yeah. the whole the harvest is plenty yeah the laborers are few laborers are you few. know what is the labor real what did it really what does it really require to move that quickly you know we i try to find this balance you know when i deliver this you know i, I try to because I, I try not to scare people away yeah. you know but uh it, it, keep pe it real people, people keep it said, real right now what did it really require so people when people ask me for, for a while when i was transitioning into trying to leadership and trying to acquire and build a team you know people would ask you know what's it take and i'd be like you got to get your insurance license and that costs about 150 bucks and i was like that's not what it takes and then what it really takes is and i would respond i'd say it, it's going to cost you everything and they would say everything and I'm like, what's that i was like it's going to cost you everything. You know what I mean? And, it, and I'd go and I'd further elaborate. It's late nights. It's early mornings. And it's not going to be next month. And it's not going to be next year. And you're really going to find out success is a continued uphill battle. You know, oh. Maxwell always says, you know you're on the path to success because it's uphill the whole way. And I found, I tell people that all the time. They're like, I feel behind. I'm like, I smile and I say, I feel behind too. Me you too. Just, you just learn to love and accept it and roll with the punches. When you reach the top of the mountain, you make a new mountain. You make we, a new we, need a, we need a new mountain. And life will make a new mountain. As a young as a young person, you know, how have you avoided the young stuff that I watch, you know, just stuff, period. Not even young people. I watch older people. So much talent. You know, I watch them just lose themselves in the party scene, clubs, drinking, smoking, partying, kicking it, women, too much of all of that. You know, how have you, you know, you uh, how much was on your 1099 this past year? It was right around 1.3 million. 1.3 what? Million. Million. Not yeah. Skittles. Yeah. 1.3 million dollars. Yes, sir. 23 years old, not even old enough to, I, I think I was teasing Dalton last night. I remember I went and rented a car and I wanted him to drive the car for us. And, and uh, we were in Florida and they say he was too young. He yes. was 24. You know, so so to drive some of these cars, renting cars, you got to be 25. So you made a meal before you could officially like just drive some of these rental cars. Yeah. And and so how did you avoid the BS, though? Because so much of, of what I see in you happened because of your discipline yeah. and ability to it's not only what you did, it's what you didn't do. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a great question. I think, you know, avoiding the BS, it was a combination of. I feel like I was kind of a wild kid, so there was some BS as a, as a young kid, just young, just out in the wrong crowds. But I think a lot of it was perspective, too, of, like, 
you know, when you want something bad enough, there's there's nothing you're not willing to do to get what it is you desire. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, one of the cliche sayings, we, you know, we have when in regard to success that we've all heard and we've all said is like, if you want to get something you've never had, you got to do something you've never done. Come you know? on. So it's like, I got to get around people I've never been around. I got to do things that I've never done. I got to get things out of my life that I'm doing now that are getting me the life that I have now. So I think that was, an, it's always an easy, for me, when it comes to winning and losing, and whatever decisions it's going to take for me to win, it's very easy. Just I don't do know, that. It's not a hesitation. It's like, yeah. if that's what it takes to win, like I've been on this diet for four and a half months and I'm in like some of the best shape I've been in right now. And that's the, that was the only weak area of, you know how I am with food. You know what I mean? Dessert two, three times a day. But That four, was it. I mean, yeah. I give it to them. You know, just like the one time I was on you about the desserts and stuff, you're like, you know, that's my only thing I got. That's the only thing. You know what thing. I mean? I smoke a cigar once yep. in a while, and I'll, and I'll eat so some So now dessert. the desserts are done now. I'm like, man, I'll take the dessert. I wish I could trade the dessert yeah. for some of these guys, what they're doing <laughs> yeah, out I wish here. they were trying to calm cake. them down. Like, <laughs> yeah. I trade you the drinks, the women, and the cigars, and the guys, and all of that, yeah. just, just for some dessert. But yeah. I'll take the dessert issue all day. So what, what, what do you think, what mistakes or what things would you do differently going back on everything? Even though it was like, man, it really was a... It wasn't a smooth ride. It was a dog fight. Yeah. You know, I remember you sitting in my office. The story I love telling is you sitting in my office and, and asking me, what are, what am I doing wrong? You know, I feel like I'm I'm doing this and doing that. And, yeah. and, and people get discouraged in that process just like you did. Yeah, you know? absolutely. But people see you now and think you never got discouraged. You never, you never yeah. had bumps. We still get discouraged. Yeah, absolutely. What, what, what things do you think, you know, moving, you know, from, from the beginning, any advice? on the things you would do differently or things you would continue doing that you would say, Hey, here's, here's what helped me. Yeah. So, so I think the advice in regard to the beginning and things I would have done differently. I, I, I really don't know if I would have done anything differently, maybe been a little more intentional with sleep, you know, but, but you, you find that balance. You, if you, if a real champion just finds a way, you know, if it costs you, way your to sleep, win. if it costs you your sleep, like I try to explain to people, like if, when you really want to win, the price doesn't matter. You know what I mean? The price didn't matter to me, it, you know, and it it, 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 it never will. I don't think, you know what I mean? And when it comes to winning, it's, I, I love it. There's this fire, you know, in, inside of me where it's like, I'm here to win, you know? And I think now I have a better perspective and this is the advice that this will be good. I, is, is your perspective on winning, you know, and I've got from you is, is making sure you have the right time on that perspective, you know? Cause it's like, you get into something like jujitsu and you got me into jujitsu, and it's like it's a I journey. Want, it's and it's, it's a journey, and it's something where somebody like you and I, we walk in, and I'm looking to to you know win against every single individual in there. But it's you know it's 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 impossible. You know what I mean? And it's something where it's like I got to be willing to go for the next ten to fifteen years. But that's success. You know what I mean? People think they're gonna come in and make one point three million, and then they see that on a surface level and don't know what goes on behind the scenes of like. Well, what what did you do, and what does it cost, and 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 what are you putting back into the business, and and what are the behind the scenes, and this, that, and the other, and it's like, you know, that's that this is this is a blue belt level or a purple belt level for those of you that know jujitsu out there, and it's like, you're gonna get caught by white belt sometimes, you're gonna get caught by you know people you never expected, and it's like it is what it is. You got to keep showing up and get reps in, and I think putting the perspective on the process as well. Like I remind myself, I like to go on. This is good good for everybody to do for your team yourself and I think go on go on the stock chart and look at these multi-billionaires and notice they'll have red days I don't know stocks all I care about is insurance but I show myself I'm like well if Elon Musk can have a red day I can have a red day he had a bad day <laughs> right. I can have a bad day right I'm gonna show up tomorrow because right. he showed up tomorrow amen come you know? on great perspective as perspective yes what what's your daily schedule typically look like now in the process see I, and this this is the thing that you've got me on since day one and, and this is i'll get a little frustrated you know and i've gotten a lot a lot more patient with people it's like i've always been up for the last five years really actually i was asking my mom because i was doing p90x for some reason in high school i was doing this tony horton workout the who's the who's the woman you have on sometimes she does the beach body stuff uh, melanie melanie yeah That's so true. i was doing i was getting up because my ups started at eight o'clock so i've been getting up since freshman year Probably I would do my workout before uh, I had to get to UPS at seven, so I'd get up at five, workout P90X three, go work. So I've been I've been up for the last 10, 15 years in between four thirty and six thirty, right? So I'd get up, work so out. So people want the millions. Yes. At twenty three. Yep. But how many of y'all are willing out willing to get up between four thirty and six thirty for ten years? Yep. 
they don't want the real stuff. They want the fluff. Yeah. They want the stuff that'll sell tickets on Instagram and tell them, hey, look, here's how you make a million. You just put some nice gel in your hair or wave cap on or something, get a tan at the beach and drive nice cars and, and work three, four hours a day. And yep. you can do this too. You know, I, I yep. just haven't seen it. You know what yep. I mean? This is the real deal. Yep. This is this is what it what it really requires. The good thing is it doesn't take a, a special college degree. You didn't go to Harvard. No. You didn't go to Yale. Nope. This this is our school. School stopped for me after ninth grade, tenth grade. My mama came in clutch. Best advice you can give. Uh, shout out Kelly. That's my girl. She Tristan's came in mom. clutch. She's I don't awesome. We're gonna get on stage yes, together. We're gonna I know. be on stage together. I love it. Best advice you can give, uh, maybe three things to young people coming up in business and whatever. Just trying they're in the process, they're trying to be great. Three things that stand out general pieces of advice and it's something i want to adopt and i'm just this is off the off the top off the cuff my friend jimmy one you know jimmy yeah, love jimmy and his wife delia they they have uh two two girls bella and brooklyn and bella uh recently i was at jimmy's birthday party and uh she came around with a book and she's like man i, th I don't think she's any older than 10 yeah she came around with a book you talk about a head start mentally I mean, I know I wasn't. I know what I was doing at 10, 11. She came around with a notebook and she asked for everybody. And it was a small room and there was a lot of people in that room that, you know, business wise, you would think were successful, which yeah. I don't determine success just on how much money you make or business yeah. or it's, it's, you know, you know where I stand with that. But from a business perspective or people that are kind of achieved a certain level status or whatever, there was a lot of people there small group but a lot yeah. of successful people and she went around the room and asked for everybody to write in her notebook a piece of advice wow at 10 years old wow and her mom told me she's been reading it every night and asking her mom questions like one of mine you know i wrote her a few things and she said you know your assignment that she asked me was what does coachable mean being coachable but but what is the best advice that you can give to young people or people coming up in the process three pieces of advice i think the number one was, is you know probably the most important if they could just do this one thing for all people but especially young people and i, I think it's identifying a common it's a combination of what do you want in this life and then who has what it is that you want but you got to measure a combination of if they have what you want do they live the life that you want to live as well like does it align you know, with, with the character values and principles Amen. that you want your life to align. Because somebody might have all types of money and they might have all types of, you know, success and cars or whatever it might be. Maybe maybe they're in the NFL or, you know, maybe they're a ballerina or they're, you know, some successful chef, whatever it is you aspire to be. But then their home life is just, it's it doesn't align with what it is that you want. You know what I mean? If you want a healthy marriage and they're out being wild, you got to be careful with getting advice from them. So you want to find a combination of do they have what you want and do they live the life behind closed doors? Does their integrity align with the life that you want to produce as well? And you need to find a way and work yourself up to having access to that individual. So if you need to go out and, and put yourself into a, a position, a lucrative position, I would recommend a sales, a sales opportunity where you could afford to buy their time or work, work your way up getting involved in a company, a charity, something where you could get access to that individual and show that you're going to be responsible with the time that they allot to you. Even if you invest into somebody's, you know, somebody's time, you've got to show you're going to be responsible with that time with results. And your, and your results, you know, it's going to just really correspond with your attitude and your effort. Those are the two biggest things you can control. But I think, you know, that number one thing is the most important is identifying who is it that has what you want in all aspects of, of life and doing everything they say to do and being responsible with the time that, that they're investing into you, right? And then I think the second thing would align with that coachability. And it's, it's really going to be like a 1.A, you know what I mean? So like 1.A would be coachable, like you said, you know, with the advice that, that you gave to Jimmy Wan's daughter is like, you know, it's going to come down to how coachable you are. When, when I look at individuals that have, you know, what it is they desire in life, th there's a level of coachability. Whether people say they, they have mentors, they don't have mentors, or they read books, they don't read books, it's usually one or the other. You know what I mean? Or it's both. 
there's some blueprint that they're extremely coachable to. You know what I mean? Because I've met people that are successful that don't read that much or they don't have a mentor. But it's it's never they don't have any guidance. There's always some type. They didn't just wake up and didn't have any suggested guidance or blueprint that they were going by. There's always some type of blueprint, workout guideline. Yeah, I've noticed my results of, of just having a nutritionist and a trainer over the last four and a half months from working out hardcore from, you know, being 13, 14 to working out until 22 years <coughs> old to just now over four months has been incredible with more intentional guidance opposed to thinking I'm young. I don't need nobody details, to tell me. Exactly. The small things. The small details. So being coachable in those and the micro details and the micro adjustments, the ju- the jujitsu, they, they tell you, you know, that's the difference between tapping somebody out and not is, is the micro adjustments, you know, and that's, that's life. That's the difference between tapping out that bank account or not is, you know what I mean? You want to, you want to tap out the bank account. Well, can you be coachable to the micro details? Right. And then I think the third thing, you know, and it, I think, you know, it's, it's a bunch of things kind of, but I think it's the self-development, you know, I think Maxwell, he says the number one place you can't overinvest is other people. But I think another area that you can't overinvest is into yourself. Amen. And it starts there. Amen. And it's going to end there. Amen. I think the level of success you're going to have in your life is going to depend on the level of internal development that you are going to continually have. And it's not a one-stop shop. It's an everyday getting up and chipping away at that mountain. Chipping away at it. Yep. Favorite dessert. Because I know you had to yeah. give it mostly up. Favorite, favorite dessert. It's real hard, but I'm a big, I'm a big cookie skillet kind of okay. guy. Like if there's a cookie skillet Ooh. at a restaurant. Okay. I'm a big cookie skillet. Have you ever had that crumble cookie? I've had crumble cookies. Those are fire. Yeah. Those are fire. I'm notorious for my old ways. I would order every dessert at any restaurant and Just try it bang all. bang it out. Yeah, try yeah. It, we'll try it all. Pick the favorite, and then, yes. then I know. Yes, love it. Well, you have a cheat day whenever that day comes. Maybe I'll join you before I get back into, yes. into the next weight cut. Thank you for keeping the uh, dream alive, man. You know, when, when I look back at the... Uh, obstacles, adversities, things that I've had to go through in this business and in, in hopes and dreams that, you know, there's somebody out there that's going to take this thing, take this opportunity like somebody gave to me and take it, take it to the next level. Uh, it's really, really meaningful. A lot of times people, when they say to me, you know, thank you, you know, for the opportunity or thanks for, you know, introducing me to this. Or, you know, I always really, man, if, if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, I thank them uh back thank you for taking advantage of the of the opportunity man because it it pains me when i watch people take an opportunity that is here and has changed my life and so many other people's lives and watch them just roll through it like it's not nothing special you know it's like giving somebody a rolls royce car and they just don't even know what they're driving and they're just wrecking into stuff and spilling coffee all over the place and just don't even respect it you know what i mean at all so it's really really fun and cool and uh gives me a special feeling to watch you take this thing you know to the next level and watch what it's doing for you and your family but more importantly what i'm watching you do for so many other people and and people that you're leading and people on your team in chicago and if there's anybody, you know, out there that's looking, you know, for their kids or for themselves, for for an awesome young mentor that you could truly follow and get behind, it would be it would be Tristan. Uh, your podcast is is called what? So it's called Adversity Kings. Adversity Kings. Yep, Adversity Kings podcast. Can't wait to get on there. I know. In person when I come to Chicago. I just I, I always I was like, why haven't I on yet? I was like, I need like an hour and a half, two hours of time, and that's not something that just comes. We're gonna easily. crush it. We're gonna crush you it. Got, together. We got, you got to put out a graphic it. of like what your schedule looks like. You know, kind of a blurred out. Because people, I don't think people realize they're like show the schedule. Just have Simon coming out. I was like, Simon's year is booked out in advance. You know what I mean? I can't Couple just months. You know what I mean? But if you so, need me, I would drop anything for yes. you. I'd blow the whole schedule off. Yes, sir. You know, unless it was something my wife or mother needed or something, <laughs> yeah. I, I would get on that next flight tomorrow and be there for you. Yes, sir. Thank you for everything that that you're doing for 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 me, for the organization, for everybody else, yeah. and, and super super proud of you. Keep up, keep up the good work, man. And and uh, you guys go out there and follow. Tristan's podcast, Adversity Kings. Follow Tristan. How would they find you on social media? So I'm Windy City Tristan. I had to start a new IG. Somebody so hacked you. I got yeah. So a lot of crazy things happen, and we'll talk about that on hate comes future with podcasts. It. Hate, hate comes with it. Yeah, exactly. But I'll take it. And, yeah. and I love I love the shirt, Notorious B-I-G. B.I.G. That's what we're gonna hit the stage with. Mom, if you're watching, this is for you. Love you. Was all a dream, baby. Was all, all a, a dream. dream. Just getting started. Let's get it. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us on another episode of the Grindcast. Get ready. It's a new day. Let's go. Let's go. Oh,